in order to gain something. You got to work hard for something and working hard requires some sort of a pain. Can you become a world-class skater overnight? No. Can you become a pianist, uh, a concert hall pianist overnight? No. Can you become the best painter in the world? No. It requires hard work in order to become a muscle memory for the soul. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Soul Fool Intuitive. Today's topic is destiny. Um, I've been wanting to talk about this topic from our first episode, but it, uh, I wanted to wait until we have more subscribers so it could touch more lives. Um, the reason why I want to talk about this is actually because of this book that I bought more than 20 years ago. It's called The Secret Language of Destiny by Gary Goldschneider. And, um, the cover actually kind of looks like that for those ones who want to get it out of line. And, um, I bought it in my early twenties and, uh, cause I always wondered why I'm, uh, why am I in this planet? What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And this is a question that most of us ask ourselves, especially when we're younger and we're trying to find our way in this world. Because I don't think that anyone thinks that they're here to be a doctor or wealthy or <clears throat> super educated. Those are the things that we do. But the reasons why we're here is to gain insight into our own souls. And I wanted to know what my calling was. And I really struggled to find that calling because I was very distracted and I also had a few gifts and, um, it's different to when you have only one gift, you think that that's all you're good for. So you kind of continue that, but I like music. I like art. I like academia, um, but not so much sports. I liked design. So I, I was very confused, but. I got this book and then I read it and every, um, uh, it has 48 different paths from 1880 until 2021 and, and it keeps going. And, uh, every year has maybe three, sometimes four paths and, um, and it's not necessarily about the exact date that you're born. Um, it's about three or four sections each year. Let's say for a few months, it's this. And for a few months, it's that. And some years have like four, some years have, has three and some years has five. So mine is called the, uh, path to discipline. And the reason why, as soon as I picked it up and I started reading mine, it made sense to me because that's something that I have struggled with all my life and. Discipline was just not my thing. And when I was in school, I was a good student, not so much because I was very disciplined. It's because I just picked it up really fast. And, uh, I was not that person who would come home on the first day of, of the school and do the exact work that you were supposed to do that day. I was that person and picked it up in school. I did my whole works, obviously, but I always studied the night before. And it worked for many years because I was able to pick it up really fast, memorize and, um, go to the, the exam sessions and do a good job. I was the same way with my, um, piano lessons. I, my teacher would give me a piece that I was interested in, let's say something by Beethoven or Mozart or whatever it is that I, uh, would tell him I was really into those days and. But then he would also give me these exercises. And for those of you who play the piano, it's Hannon and Bayer and Cherny and, and those exercise books, which are crucial. You need to do them in order to learn and in order to, um, basically train your, your fingers because the pieces that I liked were difficult. And, um, and in order to play them, you need to work yourself up. You can't just, you know, open your piano lid and start playing Beethoven and Mozart. You can't, but I, um, 
luckily my teacher was amazing and he would simplify these pieces that I was interested in and I would go home that day and I would like just play that piece over and over again try to figure it out and I would figure it out but the exercise part of it I wouldn't so I would I would always postpone until the night before and I would roughly go through it and I would show up at my lessons and my teacher knew that the the exercise part was kind of okay but not practiced the play part what I was interested in, it was perfect. And um, so that was music, then it was school. And of course, I was really not interested in sports. So, and it, it's impossible to become good in any sports if you don't have discipline. So I was not even doing that. And then when it come, came to other things, um, it was always things that I were very interested in that just I got really good at. However, once you have discipline, you can get good at anything, even things that you're not interested in because you've already uh, mastered the art of discipline because it is a form of art. So I bought the book and, uh, you know, I would just open it every now and then and read my section again. And I really didn't care about like maybe sharing it with other people only because it seemed a little out there. Now fast forward to the, to before the lockdown and I had, two months off, so I had a lot of time to um, read and I read the, the introduction part of this book. And it was so interesting. So this is how Gary um, explains destiny. So destiny is not something that is decided for you by some outside forces that say God. Destiny, or your fate, is written by yourself before you come back on this earth for another lifetime because when you are in the form of soul and you're not in your physical body we're all one we're all connected there's no separation so let's say we're all part of this ocean and the ocean has is is as a one entity but it is made of all these droplets so Think of yourself as a droplet. So when we're all in this ocean as a soul, we it's, let's call it our higher self. There's no separation. So we, we're all knowing. So we know what we have to do in order to evolve. So we plan a lifetime. We pick parents and siblings and neighbors and lovers and teachers and enemies. We pick them all on purpose and by our, by our free will. This is us. No one is doing it but us. So we write this script and it's a very complex scenario because billions of people are writing the same script and they all have to have harmony and that's the complexity of the world. That's the genius of the divine. So you write the script and then you're born with qualities that you already are bringing from your past lifetimes. You want to call it karma? Go ahead. So let's say for me, my qualities that I came with, I was gifted in, let's say, arts, humanities. These things just came naturally to me. And um, I came in with a certain naivete. I was very childlike. I was very spontaneous. I was kind of full of energy. I had this like kind of knowing about people, this curiosity, the sense of um, being trustworthy. I already had gained those in my past lifetime. But this lifetime, I had designed a life around the qualities that I've gained so then I can become something else. So I can add to the baggage, to my backpack of qualities. And that was discipline. And discipline is the most important thing. So for example, discipline is a very masculine quality because it has structure. So anything that has structure and firmness, we call masculine or in terms of yin and yang, we can look at it that way too. So it's not necessarily 
a gender. It's a quality. There's very little fluidity in it. So, and we've discussed it before where the, like in terms of a river, the water is feminine. The river banks, that's masculine. It gives it structure. And we need structure. So I designed a lifetime with, for that, to gain that. So the book I bought 20 years ago, 20 years ago, I had way less dis discipline than I do now. And, and of course, it took a lot of painful experiences and it will be um, the case for the rest of my life. So as I get more discipline, I get better at it. And then I introduce discipline to other areas of my life. So discipline is not just, you know, like just be good in school. Discipline is learning to say no, learning to say yes, boundaries, commitment, um, detachment. These are all discipline because sometimes you just want to open your mouth and tell someone, shut the F up. But the discipline of detachment makes you withdraw and not react. It takes discipline to not be reactionary. It takes discipline to be in this world, but not of this world. So, because like inclinations sometimes want you to just run into something, you know, without thinking it through. But discipline provides an opportunity for us to hold ourselves back when it's very difficult to do so. So, I want to introduce this book to all of you. You can purchase it online. I don't know if they're still selling it at the bookstore, but like I said, um, the cover kind of looks like that. The Secret of Destiny. And maybe you can get it and then you can just share it with all your friends and family. That's what I do when people come over to my house. This is a definite uh, something that I do. And... Uh, uh, most of our friends want to bought it. They use it. It's their guide. And um, and it's just interesting when you sit around with your friends or some people you just met, and then you see the reactions. Because like one of my family members, I was reading hers for her, and she loved her gifts. Where When it came down to her pitfalls, she was in like in such disagreement with it that made me realize that, you know, sometimes your ego is what's stopping you from marching ahead. And for all of us uh, who know her, the pitfalls were like so obvious because we've known her. Uh, but of course, it was uh, not something that she, at that point of her life, she was willing to agree with or acknowledge. Uh, where, where I read my uh, pitfalls... I already knew it. I heard it from people. I heard it from my teachers. I heard it from my mother. And the beauty of it is my mother is the most disciplined human being I've ever met. She turns into a robot when she wants to do something. She plans it. She does it. She sticks to it. Um, and she was in front of me. And isn't it beautiful that I pick the mother who has the quality that I need to learn in my lifetime and discipline? Of all of them, discipline is she's the most committed. She's the most hardworking. She's very structured. And she could come across as masculine because discipline is a very masculine quality. And I was always spontaneous. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm the one that, like, would want to give you a call on a woman say, let's go for coffee. And I was a lot like that when I was younger. And as I got older, I realized that, you know, I need to keep my naivete, but I also have to bring an element of control because that is an arsenal. That is something that is so powerful. Not to be too rigid in order to come up to be off putting. So keep the childlike energy, but also be mature about it. So and 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 I I'm I love the fact that I had these figures in my life that were nothing but disciplined and maybe the parts in my life were was very questionable to my mom or parts that I was not applying my discipline and um, but the thing is that if it was that easy you would have not 
land a lifetime around it. Sometimes, according to this book, you gotta come a few times to just gain one quality. And sometimes in one lifetime, you just jump a few ste steps up. You gain quite a few. So, um, so that, and that's how he explains karma. Because karma is what we've learned from our past experiences and we're bringing it with us, good or bad. And then we work it out. And, and when you read this book, it also gives you hope that the understanding that we have of this world and our lifetimes, because sometimes you talk to people and they're so negative and they think that that's it. Life is here for us to have pain and suffer. But the thing is, when you read these life paths, they all have pain in them. They all have suffering because that's what it takes in order to gain something. You got to work hard for something and working hard requires some sort of a pain. Can you become a world-class skater overnight? No. Can you become a pianist, uh, a concert hall pianist overnight? No. Can you become the best painter in the world? No. It requires hard work in order to become a muscle memory for the soul. Because we can easily think about our muscles, how we learn to play the piano, how we learn how to, how to play tennis, how to like work out, how to train our muscles to uh, be strong, how to be a gymnast. But our soul also has a muscle memory and that muscle memory goes for eternity. So if you think about it, pain for a short time will have rewards for eternity. And that's exciting. And then it makes you look at your life in a different light. For example, if you were born just as a touch negative person, where you plan the lifetime in order to not be stuck in being negative, well, that's going to be very difficult because your inclination is just to be negative. You look at the world and then you're like negative, victim, pity, bad luck. And yet the same path has brought so many good things in your life that as you go along your path, you learn to not get stuck in the hardness of your life in the painful parts of your life, but be able to surpass them and look at the good thing. And once you master that, then the negativity kind of seems to move out of your life. Not to say that you're not going to have difficult moments, but you will no longer be stuck in it. So maybe that was your karma. Maybe you took certain things from granted in your past lifetime. Maybe this is such a quality that is was difficult for you to grasp in your past lifetime. So now you design another lifetime around it. But the joy of being able to look at things from a different point of view and not be so stuck in your way to say that everything is negative or... And the thing is that whatever issues you have in your life, let's say mine was discipline, and I heard it from my teacher, from my aunt, from my mom, that you need to be more disciplined. You need to be more disciplined. So let's say if you're a negative person, I'm sure you've heard it from so many people. You are negative. You are negative. If you are um, kind of emotionally stunted, I'm sure people have accused you of not caring. You're just not caring. You're like, you don't have a heart, you know? So the universe around us will remind us what our destiny is supposed to be. And we have to be humble to listen to them, not like fight it because that's looking at life in a very immature way. Because, you know, everyone, every single one of us will have to make a living so we can feed ourselves. That's not the point of life. The point of life is these qualities that will last for eternity to be able to be hopeful and positive and mature and like all of those um, amazing transcendental qualities. And, um, and I really love when I read these 
path for my friends because I know them really well. And I and it's just so amazing. I'm like, the guy who wrote this book was like a genius. He was connected to the divine because when I know them and I read their gifts and then they're like in awe and they're like, oh my God, give it to me. And then they take a picture of it and then they take it home and they analyze it. So it lifts that veil of um, being unclear, the veil of mystery. And then you see rhyme and reason in your life. And then you see where you are and how far you've come and how how further much you need to travel. So, for example, I have started even bringing more discipline to my life, you know, from little things, let's say, just make my bet every morning, um, do my breath work, do my workout, read the book for four pages, six pages, 10 pages a day, uh, practice my vocabulary, learn a new word, do a cold shower. All of these things that I inherit, inherit, inherently don't want to do um, because they're difficult. They require work. Because I want to wake up in the morning and do nothing. I want to go grab my coffee, sit by my uh, chair and sit on my chair and just surf on my phone and daydream and play with my tarot cards because they bring me joy. But I intentionally bring these tasks that require discipline because what discipline does for you is it it provides you a way to look past the pain. So for example, when you want to take a cold shower, it's very difficult because you know it's going to be hard on your body and it's uncomfortable. But if you just focus on the rewards, which is you feel more vital, your immune system gets stronger, your metabolism goes up, you feel more fresh, it's good for your skin and your hair. And then you can tell yourself that this is something that I can do. I can push through pain. And if we bring these qualities in our lives, for example, for me, discipline, what I have built is the quality that no matter what life tosses at me, I can get through it. And the discipline of knowing that pain is always followed by rewards and pleasure. So even though it's maybe uncomfortable to stay up all night and study, maybe it's uncomfortable to say no to yourself, you know, for, for, those of us who are in committed relationship, you know, the temptation is always around the corner. You have to have the discipline to say no, because saying no to that will bring more satisfaction in your intimate relationship, because that's the most important thing in your life, not the momentary pleasure, the pleasure of prolonged commitment, the pleasure of making your partner and yourself happy, the pleasure of intimacy. So the discipline of saying no, but also the discipline of saying yes to opportunities, even though those opportunities might be difficult. Um, so I'm going to leave you with that thought, and I would love it if you spread the name of this book with all of your friends and your loved ones, because it has helped me and my loved ones, and it will help you and your loved ones discover the mystery of your life path. Thank you so much for listening to another episode. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you.